Hello, hello, and welcome to Self Care is Sexy. My name is Chris, and I'll be your host. We are a weekly podcast that's here to generate and share self care ideas with each other. Last week, I shared emergency tips on how to deal with the wildfires and the choking hazardous air that we're experiencing locally in Portland. Now, I know if you're not dealing with this, maybe maybe you're not on the West Coast or maybe it's, you know, years into the future and you're just hearing this show for the first time, there are still some really good tips that, uh, that can apply to, to whatever disaster is headed your way. If you missed that show, you can catch up through iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and anywhere else you find your podcasts. And never miss a beat by subscribing to the show. Okay, I want to give you a quick preview of what to expect from today's show. So today's show, we're talking about subtle acts of self-care. It's just becoming more and more difficult for a lot of people to be able to do self-care. So we're focusing our attention today on the little things that we do and ways to celebrate and perpetuate these little acts of self-love. Before we get to all that, a few quick housekeeping notes. First of all, I'd like you to check out the Underbelly Yoga. It's with Jessamine Stanley. It's what I've been doing for self-care. She's just this amazing body positive, sex positive, weed positive yoga teacher on the East Coast who's really shaking shit up and has a series of videos that you can do at home that is yoga for everybody. I especially love the making it fucking lush video because as we're, you know, dealing with this poor air quality on the West Coast, I just, I needed something real chill that, that just gives me that extra self-care. So check it out. There's an app with uh, tons of videos. You can find her on Instagram and she's just this awesome yogi. So for sure, check her out. It's the underbelly. And again, her name is Jessamine Stanley. Amazing stuff. All right, friends, I have actually, I've never done this before, but I am using this platform right now, the Self Care Sexy Podcast, to ask for your help. One of my beloved self care rituals is to visit this magical place here in Oregon called Brighton Bush Hot Springs. I've been going there since 1999. And it is a true sanctuary for me. It was almost completely destroyed by the wildfires this past week. And, oh, God, I was just there this last month for a personal retreat. I would never guess that it would be gone so quickly just like that. For me, that place, it's like returning home. So please, any amount that you can donate would be greatly appreciated. You can find them on the web B-R-E-I-T-E-N-B-U-S-H dot com. And thank you so much. All right. Today we are talking about subtle acts of self-care and how important they are to our overall well-being. And I I have a list of things that you can do to help you get that extra self-love in this week and focus on the little things that add up and make a huge difference in your overall relationship with yourself and, of course, your mental well-being. So if you are new to this show, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. We're a podcast that's here to generate and share self-care ideas with one another. And we've had some incredible interviews over the past few years from the most least likely people talking about self-care and what they do, how they make it a priority, and what happens when we don't get the self-care that we need. And you know, friends, this year especially, Because it's been really hard to talk about self-care and and mental health in a time when, like, even the most positive people are feeling that grind of anxiety and depression, uh, compassion fatigue, and and just dealing with so many changes so quickly. Self-care has become such an important priority. So if you are new, I want you to know that I'm so glad that you have found us. I want to help give you permission to put yourself first. And a great way to do that is just this, what you're doing right now. Listening to positive podcasts that help you take care of you. Because taking care of yourself is sexy as fuck. It looks good on you. 
And before I get to my list of 20 subtle acts of self-care, I just want to just talk for a moment about like motivation and striving and kind of this this is kind of a next level 201 type class. Because if you've been listening to this show, you already have some tools in your self-care kit. But it's always important to just take a little bit dive deeper. So with that, I think first of all I want to talk about how people confuse accomplishments for self-worth and how that's really bad for self-care. So I want to talk about that for just a brief second. When we're going through this list of 20 ideas of these subtle ways that you can you can give yourself that self-care this weekend, remember that it's not about checking off the list. It's not about accomplishing something. That's not where the fruit of your labors are really going to come in. Where you're really going to derive the most benefit from these practices is the actual act of doing it. The act of making that intentional decision to give yourself self-care. However that looks for you. If that's as subtle as being able to ask and watch the show on TV that you want to watch tonight, if that that is an act of self-care. It's small, it's subtle, but you have to start somewhere. And so... It's really important, again, not to take today's list and take all these ideas and take, you know, dieting advice or financial advice and just check off the boxes and be like, I'm done. I did what I said. I was I I did what I was supposed to do to accomplish this. And now that makes me a good person. If that's the route you're taking, if that's the direction you're headed, be forewarned. It's going to be empty and there really is no end to that. When you derive your self-worth from where you're at right now and you can find value and love in just being yourself, that's where the real intentional living is. That's where the real good stuff is. That's when life starts working for you. Because you you really cannot white-knuckle your way through anything because perfection is subjective. You know, what what you might think is the perfect way to be about something or the perfect way to accomplish something might not even be foreseeably feasible in the near future, you know, with how quickly everything's changing. So really try to pay attention if that's the behavior you're exhibiting when it comes to self-development or bettering yourself. And, And the other thing I like to say is that When you want to improve any area of your life, whether it be your fitness, your finances, your self-care, whatever it is, always ask the why, the why you're doing it before you take the action. I know right now in our society, there's a lot of fear floating around and a lot of people are just taking actions. They're just plowing forward and making decisions with, you know, without really asking themselves why they're doing certain things or why they're, they're behaving a certain way. And so really taking that pause to understand, okay, am I trying to tick off all the boxes, you know, because it's good for me and I want to, or am I just plowing through it to try and rank up another accomplishment to feel good about myself? So you see how asking the why of what you're doing is really going to point you in the direction and, and get your barometer on straight. Because it's good to have that sort of ideal self that you're shooting for or that perfect self that you have this image of it's good to visualize and certainly see yourself accomplishing big audacious goals that you know nobody would ever think are possible and that's good to be striving towards but give just as much attention to this current version of yourself so love yourself unconditionally right now where you are at this weight You know, love yourself wholly at this weight, at this body shape. Love yourself completely with this much money in the bank. You know, don't tell yourself, oh, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to reward myself once I accomplish X, Y, Z. Because that's exactly the backwards way of thinking. And I I think if you just, you know, dive a little bit deep into any kind of self-help right now, you're going to start seeing that switch, that real, so instead of driving everyone's motivation towards get the car, get the house, get the money, get the things, it's really towards how you're taking care of yourself during what you're doing right now, whatever that is, and accept that. So, you know, stop focusing 
your attention on other people while you're neglecting your own self. Because learning to take care of ourselves and to love ourselves with, you know, other people in our lives still being supported by us is the most incredible act of self-care that you can do. If you can really generate it for yourself, it will, by example, have more an impact on other people around you. They'll start to see that, oh, you do that. You take care of yourself. You set boundaries. Maybe I can too. And I have to tell you folks, in this world of really making self-care a priority and having that an intention, it perpetuates itself. It really snowball effects. So this weekend, as you're heading into whatever you're headed into, I want you to take this list of ideas and, and you know, try one of them and then immediately celebrate yourself and give yourself recognition for having stepped outside of the box and tried something, even if you had no idea what the outcome was going to be, or if you had to patchwork, put it together with whatever you have. I want you to be able to celebrate that and watch how it will motivate you to do it again and again and again until this becomes your way of life, until you can get to that place where you can say, I was a badass at self-care today. I did a facial. I drank my water. I did the activity that I could under the circumstances I'm in, and I feel fantastic. All right, so real quick, these are 20 subtle acts of self-care. Number one, eat. Now, I don't care what your diet is or your budget. Not eating when you're hungry is a direct act of self-inflicted suffering, and it's got to stop. And the same goes with overeating. So it seems like a pretty basic concept that you should eat when you're hungry, you know, or uh, and stop when you're satisfied so you're not overeating and really taking care of yourself in what you put in your body. But that is such a subtle act of self-care on the daily. How many times are you putting food in your mouth thinking about this is fuel for my body, this is good for my body, I'm celebrating myself? Now, I don't care if you're working with emotional eating or if you've ever had any problems with eating at all in your life. Every time you intentionally feed yourself something good, I want you to perpetuate that as an act of subtle self-care and remind yourself, oh, I'm taking care of myself. Yeah, you could have ate a gallon of ice cream to top it off, but every time you choose to, to put something good into your body, that is a subtle act of self-care. And so that goes along with number two, drink your water. Now, you are literally made out of water. You know you need it. So drink up. You know, as a matter of fact, use this tip reminder right now to go take a nice big gulp of some ice cold water. Go ahead. We'll wait. Number three, another subtle act of self-care is to set a timer. Set a timer on your phone for the social media blackout. Currently... I am on, I am eight hours and, let me see, eight hours, 58 minutes, and three seconds away from use of my social media. And I do this every Thursday in conjunction with my weekly meeting and also on, on Tuesdays for yoga, which, you know, I miss, and that's okay. We're not trying to be perfect here, but I do. I set a reminder on my phone. It's a timer, and I set it for 23 hours and 50 minutes, and... I do that to, to, to remind myself for the next 23 hours, I am not going to touch social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever the social media platform is, I stay off of it for as long as I can. Now, I'm not always perfect, and neither do you need to be, but the purpose of this is to take a blackout, a break from it, because if you get sucked into it like I do all the time... You know, you have to set limits. Setting boundaries and managing your time and managing yourself is a huge act of self-care, but it's so subtle. So really implement that whenever you can. Number four, take rest. Now, this is specifically for my insomniacs out there. I know there are several of you that are having a really hard time, and especially if you're affected by the wildfire smoke, you are probably having an even more difficult time getting any measurable amount of sleep. So just remember,